So it really is a privilege to be here again, simply because so much of what's going on in e-health and telemedicine has actually been done here first. And so all of you from Aravind and throughout India know that there are many centers that have been working on e-health and telemedicine. Aravind's work here, just some slides on the left from the remote monitoring from the main hospitals to the community-based clinics on the right, some of the work that Alan and, and others have been involved in here uh, with people from Iowa and Michigan and Utah on looking at screening in Nepal and throughout India to try to provide a real eye assessment at various locations outside of clinics. And I was just Dr. Vicky and you said you just finished a project, so maybe you could come on up and just share a little bit because it really is exciting work. Yeah, that's, that will add some value to the talk also. So uh, we've been running these vision centers for many years. Oh, uh, wherever possible, we've tried to take uh, a mobile-based uh, fundus photo to detect uh, posterior segment problems, mainly glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the quality of images weren't very good. Or when the real need was there, they were not able to capture those images. So we introduced by giving them a, a low-cost fundus camera, the OptoMed or the Pictor camera in all these centers. Uh, even then, there was no incremental change to what was happening before. So we wanted to study what is really happening. And again, I would like to thank uh, Maria Woodward and uh, the team from Kellogg who partnered with us in Pondicherry. Uh, we randomized 6,000 patients. Uh, so one group is getting fundus photo. Anybody above the age of 35 photo, for 35 to 40 is getting a fundus photo. And uh, the, the other group, we do the historical way. Wherever the nurse feels or the, ML, uh, the, the technician feels, then they take a fundus image and upload on the EMR. Uh, we have to look into the data, but uh, the last week, the 10th week, the study is completing uh, uh, next week, uh, Saturday. Uh, but when I was discussing with the technicians who are working in the vision centers, uh, they feel that, no, of course, no, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's their feeling, but we have to really look into the data. They feel that their referral has increased uh, three to fourfold now after they started taking images because, uh, because of the training and uh, uh, the, the, the lack of resources, the time and things like that, no, they were not able to take fundus images on all patients. So whenever they felt a need, they took. But once we started taking images for all the patients, I think the referral pattern has changed. But we'll have to really look into the data. Thank you for sharing that exciting news. So we know, as I said, that various institutions here in India have done a lot. I, if I had to list all the centers that have programs, I'd probably be spending the entire talk talking about them. So. I apologize if I've left somebody off, but it really is a reflection of the wonderful work that's been going on here in India. And it's a leader within the field of glaucoma as well, since it's a relatively newer approach in the last 20 years or so. In the United States, this whole notion of e-health is very, very topical. The Kaiser Permanente, one of our big, big national healthcare systems, estimated that 52% of its visits last year were through some form of e-health. And that across the country, 25% of current outpatient visits will be by e-health across all the medicine by 2025. India has a really bright future. You can look at the demographic period, pyramid from 2010 over the next 40 years. It's going to have a young workforce to drive the economy, but it's also going to age. And so the workload for all of us, all of you out there, is only going to increase. And yet there aren't as many eye doctors to continue to take care of patients the way we always have. And so this is an opportunity to incorporate the newest approaches, and you can develop the models that the rest of us will use, just like with cataract surgery, just like with some of these telemedicine programs, to really help us provide the kind of care that we need for our populations. So as Lee and others have said, this really is for us a very important two-way exchange of ideas and models. Our patients, I'm sure your patients are the same, would prefer to learn about eye topics in black at home or in gray at the eye center. So it's really an opportunity for us to take advantage of how people want to learn. Now telehealth involves a lot of different aspects. 
It involves the care that we provide to patients. It also means that there are ways for doctors to talk to one another, for patients to have their eye care monitored, and for the patients to interact directly with us, with other patients. So it's a huge area. For the rest of this talk, we're just going to focus on the aspect of telehealth that relates to the patient with the doctor. And so there's two ways of looking at this. One is how patients get into the system, and once we know the patient, what we can do with them. It's clear that in the United States and Western countries, patients are very willing to have remote e-health visits, even for new emergencies, in the absence of a doctor-patient relationship. Talk to our colleagues in China, they feel their patients are very different. It'd be very interesting to understand how Indian patients view whether or not they want to use e-health in place of a live doctor visit. Let me ask you, how many people here think your patients would be happy to communicate uh, as a new patient with you through an electronic means as opposed to actually seeing you? I see just a few hands, and how many think the patients would still want to see you the first time? Pretty much everybody else. How about for follow-up patients? How many would be willing to do it if they already know you? Hands up for people whose patients do it. A few more, and how many would still want to see you in person? Most of the people. So again, it's, it, there's some cultural differences. Our doctors are worried that e-health would take away their business. The folks in the UK showed definitively and since been confirmed to the US that remote e-health screening with cameras will actually increase the business for us, including for cataracts. Uh, I'll skip the technical issues for the continuation with care. We do know for diabetic retinopathy that increases follow-up and makes it within a shorter time interval. So it helps with access. We now have all this equipment that we could put into mobile sites. This is the Wills project for the CDC uh, that goes into a van, but there are lots of different ways of compartmentalizing this. It goes on iPads, it goes on picture cameras. There's just a almost limitless way of doing this. So how effective is this? We know that patient knowledge when they're seen in a virtual clinic is pretty close to that of in-person except for number seven, which is did you know that glaucoma is the second most common cause of severe visual impairment in Wales? This is a UK study. But otherwise, you can see the knowledge is pretty comparable for virtual versus uh, live patients. The key is how good is the examination? There was a very nice meta-analysis done, and it shows that diagnostic accuracy for glaucoma, you can look at the sensitivity and specificity numbers for the papers that used optic nerve head exams through imaging. And look at the bottom for in-person exams. So they're pretty comparable. People would say, oh my gosh, it's sensitive to 83%. That's not great. But the sensitivity for in-person exams isn't that much better. And in fact, this meta-analysis was slightly worse. But you can see the wide variance numbers in these estimates. A second piece of information is that just having the image is nice. Having some additional clinical information helps make the interpretation more accurate. And we've known that since the days of automated EKG interpretations. To look at the accuracy of the images that are obtained, some folks have proposed that we look at crowdsourcing, where a lot of experts get together in terms of individuals, not so much experts, but people who look at a few photos, are trained to look at it, and then crowdsource. And you can see the accuracy levels actually are not bad if you look at the area underneath the curve at 0.7 once they look at over 12 images or so. And of course, the Dr. Kim here in Retina at Aravind was part of the Google team that looked at deep learning as the accuracy of interpretation for retinal fundus photographs for diabetic retinopathy. Dr. Alwards with Iowa, where Dr. Abramoff has been working on this for two decades now and has similar results. And so, in summary, teleophthalmology today has pretty widely accepted usages for ROP screening and monitoring, for diabetic retinopathy, for AMD screening and monitoring, including home monitoring with the, uh, with the disturbance monitor, with foresight, uh, glaucoma, and refractive error, and probably at least initial eye exams for screening. 
a little more work or a lot more work necessary for some other indications, but I know a lot of these projects are being worked on here in India to help all of us. And of course, out there are all of the entries from high tech in the US, but I'm always reminded in India that the best engineering schools are here in India. And so I expect to add in some Indian companies in my next version of this talk. Thank you very much.